It's possible to consider free fall in a high school physics class. And um, what we're going to do then is just consider um, if we exclude air resistance. So what do I mean by that? I'm going to assume, so I'm gonna say here, assume there's no air resistance. That's what I'm going to mean. Because in real life we have air resistance and if that was the case, then it would sort of, it would change everything. So we're going to assume there's no air resistance. So you could be in a vacuum, for example. So that, that could be a good example. Now, if you're in free fall, what this means is you're just falling through the air. So you could jump out of a plane, uh, but assuming there was no um, air resistance, then you would just keep increasing your speed all the time. So I'm going to say this here, that the velocity, this is the key thing here, Velocity increases every second. So it's just going to keep getting more and more and more. And in idealized situations, sort of the easiest thing to deal with, we're going to assume this happens here, that your velocity increases every second. Now that's because we have an acceleration. Okay, so because your velocity increases, we were learning before that an acceleration is just the change in velocity versus time. So if I have an acceleration, that means I'm changing my velocity. And in this case, it is, it's changing every second. So what do we consider your acceleration? Well, we're going to say the acceleration, uh, this is important here that the acceleration of, let's call it free fall. Well, so if you're just falling through the air, it's going to be well, we normally call it, well, it's an acceleration, so it'll be 9.81 meters per second squared. That is how you would actually fall if you were just dropping through the air without any air. So assuming there's no air there, you would fall at this constant acceleration. And a constant acceleration means your velocity would increase every second always. So that means if you fell from really high up, you would just be going faster and faster by the time you land it. Now, this value right here, this only works, uh, by the way, sometimes we call this G. Some people like to write as G equals 9.81 meters per second squared. That's perfectly fine. But this only works on Earth at sea level. So this value right here, I just want you to know that it depends on where you are. So on Earth at sea level, the acceleration due to, uh, or the acceleration of free fall, it's actually caused by gravity. It turns out we're going to be talking about that, about the force due to gravity. And it turns out that gravity gives us an acceleration. That's because we have mass. It turns out uh, some mass that's accelerating is having a force. So that's why we could say that we feel a force from gravity and it's causing us to accelerate at this 9.81 meters per second squared. But that's only on Earth at sea level. What if we considered another situation? What if we were, I don't know, um, how about on the moon? Well, on the moon, we have a different acceleration due to uh, free fall or different acceleration due to gravity there. Turns out it's um, a lot less than on Earth. In fact, the acceleration due to gravity, well, we can call it A or we can call it G. G often is used just because we say the acceleration due to gravity. Turns out this is actually known as the gravitational field strength, and so is this. And there's actually an equation that we can use in order to figure out um, what the acceleration due to gravity on any planet will be. Now You don't necessarily need it here, but I'll give it to you anyway. It's just, um, let's say here, well just in case you're curious, you can figure this out for any place, any location. And it turns out the way it goes that you have a force is equal to G, which is some constant, times a big M times a little m divided by the distance squared. Now this would be the force due to gravity. But that means then if you want the acceleration due to gravity, or what's called the gravitational field strength, it turns out it's just the force divided by the mass. So in this case, then it would just be, well, I would cancel out one of these masses. So I would have G times big M over R squared. So it turns out, in case you are curious, in general, this works for any planet of any mass. Um, and this is just depending on the distance you are from the center of that planet. So in other words, this is the radius of the planet. 
So on Earth, uh, if you put in the mass of the Earth and you put in the radius of the Earth here, we well, have to square that value though, and you multiply it by g, which is a constant, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, if you use uh, SI units, then you'll figure out the gravitational field strength from any distance away from any object. So that means this works on Earth, but it turns out on the Moon it's different. That's because the Moon has a different mass than the Earth, it's a lot less, and it has a different radius. So if you're standing on the surface of the moon, it turns out it's only about 1.6 meters per second squared. So that would be the acceleration uh, of free fall on the moon, for example. So on Earth, it's this value. On the moon, it's this. Near another place, let's say you're, I don't know, near Jupiter. Well, depending on what height you're at, you can calculate what G would be for you. But the key thing is, though, we're excluding air resistance. Now, if you don't have air resistance, though, then you have some neat things. I mean, obviously, you're going to keep accelerating always, and that's not very realistic. On Earth, it's very difficult to really have this happening, because you'd have to be in a vacuum and then good luck breathing. I mean, you can't get in your plane and do that because your plane works. The very fact that your plane can fly, uh, its wings, is all about you know, displacing air. So that means you need some air for your airplane to work. So you can't really get in a plane and then jump out of it and then assume you have no air resistance. You always have air resistance in real life. But if you go somewhere else, like the moon, that's a place where humans have been. Um, I found this YouTube video, just so I just wanna see if I can find it for you. Here we go. Yeah, so this is bunny hopping on the moon, it's called. Uh, so this one right here on Apollo 17, which is the last of the Apollo missions to actually go to the moon. Um, there's a guy named Gene Cernan. He was one of the guys who went there. Look how he hops. Now, the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is a lot less than on Earth. In fact, it's about one-sixth. So because of that, take a look at how he's walking around. He was actually narrating and saying how he finds it's much easier to walk around if he's hopping. So if you look, he's sort of he's sort of hopping like a bunny would or like a uh, a kangaroo would, and it turns out um, that's an easy way to travel on the moon. Now, why is it? Well, it's because um, there's less gravity, so you can actually hop much easier. These guys were also in these big bulky spacesuits, so it was easier for them to actually hop around. So that just shows that if you have no air resistance, then you can actually, let's say these guys did an experiment, let's say they jumped out of, uh, I don't know, their spaceship and actually just jumped out, then they would actually experience this uh, free fall excluding air resistance. Now in real life, we do have air resistance, so that causes very different things. What happens is, of course, your velocity increases, but you're going to have a uh, resistive force due to the air resistance. And so that means you can reach something called a terminal velocity. But in these situations, and a lot of especially high school physics examples, we're going to assume that there's no air resistance, so that means you just assume that your acceleration is constant. So we're going to assume a constant acceleration, which means your velocity increases every second by the same amount. So we have a constant acceleration.